Okay, so here we have an example of a projectile motion problem. We have an object being thrown at 10 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. Now the object's going to go up and it's going to come down, hence the two-dimensional motion. What we need to do first is we need to break down the 10 meters per second into an x and y component. So what we have is we have a situation where we have our vector, just made a little bit bigger, and now that is made up of a component along x and a component along y. So here we have the v naught x component, the initial velocity along the x, and here we have the v naught y component, the initial velocity along the y. Since we know the hypotenuse, 10 meters per second, and we know the angle, 30 degrees, we can use some trig in order to figure out v naught x and v naught y. v naught y is going to be equal to 10 multiplied by the sine of 30, and v naught x is equal to 10 multiplied by the cosine of 30. Make sure to review your trig if you're having some trouble figuring that out. v naught y is therefore going to be equal to 5 meters per second, and v naught x is going to be equal to 8.66 meters per second. Now right here we have two pieces of data, the velocity along x and the velocity along y, when the ball is initially thrown, or when the object is initially thrown. The important thing to remember here is that the velocity along y is going to change, and that's because the object is in free fall. Last time I looked, if you throw something on Earth, it's going to come back down, right? John Hill, don't look at me like that. It does happen every time. Okay, So the ball is going to go up and it's going to come down. That means that the y component of the velocity is going to change. Now so long as there are no outside forces or outside accelerations along x, the v naught x component, the 8.66 meters per second that we found in this example, is going to remain constant for the entire trip. That's very important to remember. The y component of the velocity is going to change, but the x component of the velocity is going to stay constant. Now let's say you want to figure out how long it takes for this object to reach its maximum height after it's been thrown. In order to do this we have to remember a couple of key things about our problem. One, that the initial velocity along x is going to remain constant. So v naught x is always going to be equal to 8.66 meters per second. v naught y, however, starts at 5 meters per second, and it's going to change. Now the way you want to think about this is that the ball is going to go up, and it's going to come down. At the maximum height, much the same way as we did in the one-dimensional freefall problems, the y component of the velocity is zero, and the entire velocity at maximum height is all along x. So at maximum height, your v naught x is still equal to 8.66, Again, no acceleration in the x direction, but at maximum height, vy is equal to zero. Note that I used the notation of vy equals to zero, where v naught y was the initial velocity along the y direction. In order to figure out how long it takes to reach maximum height, we're going to bust out one of our big four equations. In this case, we're going to use that the final velocity along y is equal to the initial velocity along y, plus the acceleration along y times the time. The final velocity along y in this case is going to be zero, because we're trying to find out how long it takes to reach maximum height. The initial velocity is 5 meters per second, and the acceleration, make sure to put minus 9.8 meters per second squared, otherwise you're going to have negative time, and the last time I checked, no one in this classroom had a DeLorean. So in order to figure this out, we're going to do a little bit of math, and we get a time to reach maximum height equal to 0 0.51 seconds. So the time that it takes to reach maximum height is 0 0.51 seconds, and we found that because we know that the final velocity along y is equal to 0, the initial velocity along y is equal to 5, ergo the velocity is changing, that means that we have a, an acceleration, and we get that acceleration because we are in free fall. We set up our equation, 0 is equal to 5 plus negative 9.8 multiplied by the time, and we get a time of 0.51 seconds. That is the time that it takes to reach maximum height. 
Now this problem has the special case that the object is being thrown from and returning to ground level. What that means is that we have a special condition. The time that it takes to reach maximum height is the same as the time that it takes to fall back down to earth. Okay? You can actually see this if you go outside and throw a football straight up in the air and catch up where you caught it. If it took one second to go up, it's going to take one second to come down. Ergo, the total time is equal to two seconds. We found the time that it takes to get to maximum height as 0.51 seconds. If we want to figure out the total time of the object's flight, then the total time would be equal to 2 multiplied by 0 0.51, or 0 0.51 plus 0 0.51, obviously. And so we get a total time in the air of 1.02 seconds. So that's the time that it takes for the object to go up and come down, and it's coming back down to the exact position from where it was released. This is a special case. This is not always the case in physics. Please do not ask me if you need to memorize this case. And if we want to figure out the displacement of the ball along the x direction, now we have to remember that the velocity along x is still constant. It hasn't changed. So the delta x of formula, the delta x, the displacement along x, would be equal to the initial velocity along x multiplied by the time plus 0. The zero is coming from the fact that you would still have the one-half, the acceleration times the time squared term, but since the acceleration along the x direction is zero, we have zero at the end of the equation. So in this case, we would just have delta x is equal to the initial velocity along x, which is 8.66 meters per second, multiplied by the total time that the object is in the air, 1.02 seconds. Okay. So take a little bit to review this problem. Remember that the y component velocity is changing. That's why the object returns back down to Earth. And the x component of the velocity is remaining constant. You could have a problem where the x component of the velocity is changing, but that's information that they have to give you. They would say things like, oh, there's air resistance, or that sort of thing. In the absence of that kind of information, you assume that the velocity along x is constant.